Sunday morning. Well, only just 11.57. Wow. Got in there at around uh, quarter to six this morning. Due in at six, so I got there a bit early, like I do. <coughs> um, had to wait a few minutes to get some trucks out of the way. And then uh, pulled on in. And it was quite small boxes, but they were heavy boxes, because obviously I was heavy coming up here last night, uh, yesterday afternoon. So uh, it took them a little while, nearly six hours to unload. But in that time, I, I had some trailer issues. Well, last night, as I pulled into the yard last night, um, all my marker lights down the right-hand side, and my real rear tail lights went out so uh, I had that to deal with this morning so I wasn't going to call anyone out on uh, Sunday night so I thought I phoned, I phoned it through and told them on Sunday and uh, we activated the, uh, the plan on uh, Monday morning so I knew I was going to be in there for a good few hours so I thought well they might as well come then it's cheaper <coughs> so they came out and said, "Yeah, yeah, you got a you got a wire sizzling away." So uh, they solved that, and he had it plugged into his uh, his test system. All the lights were working, so we proved that the uh, the trailer was working. But Mercedes being Mercedes, it was still telling me I had a fault in the truck. And uh, when you plugged it back into the truck, when you plugged the truck Susie back in, um, the fault was still there. I still had no lights down there. So uh, the guy said, oh, you must have blown a fuse. So we took the fuse panel apart and started looking to see where, um, where the, you know, what fuse it was. Could we make out what fuse it was? Could we help? There was, we tried all the loads of different fuses. None of them made any sense whatsoever. So thank you, Mercedes, for making that easy. So anyway, the bloke goes, well, it's an, obviously it's clearly a Mercedes problem. Now I've fixed the trailer. So you can have to go back to work. So right, okay. So he goes off. I phone all up back up and say, look, it's not a trailer issue, it's a Merc issue now. Oh, okay, we'll get someone out. We'll phone up Merck and see what they say. Well, they phoned Merck up, and Merck <coughs> <coughs> said, no, we need to send somebody out. We won't do it over the phone. I was like, can you not just tell me what fuse number it is? And I can pull the fuse, have a look to see if it's all right or not. And if it isn't, we'll put another fuse in. I've got some spares. No, I can't do that. Wankers. So they weren't having none of that, so they called another bloke out. So they weren't going to call out Merck for, for it. So they called another independent bloke out. So he comes out and goes, uh, pop your lights on then. Let's have a look, see what the problem is. So I told him exactly what the problem is. He goes, he says, right, okay. Uh, let's have a look and see what happens. So I put the lights on and the bloody things come on. So how did that happen? He goes, right. He says, it doesn't happen very often. He says, but, this is the only thing I can think it has, it has a timer reset in the ECU into the into the, into the system that after a, an event, it takes a little while to reset itself and then comes on and works properly. So it's, 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 It'd be helpful if somebody said that. As it was, I wasn't going anywhere. So I didn't lose anything. But that was another call out. Merck could have said that. Or somebody should have known that. So we're in a 40 mile an hour limit. And there's cameras everywhere. And I'm empty, and it's 12 o'clock, and I'm heading south, 
and it's going to take anything between five and six hours to get back. So A, I won't be on the docks tonight, and the furthest I will probably get is Newbury. If I get there. So it all depends on the traffic. We shall see. So yeah, an eventful morning, trying to sort myself out and spent a good 45 minutes laying down in the footwell looking at fuses. Oh, do you think you would have thought? Uh, they're all, everything's labelled up, apart from the one we were looking for, and I was looking for. I think, you know, there's probably only about 30, 35 fuses in there. It'd probably been easier to take them to start at the beginning and take them all out. But then again, if I'd have done that, I still would have come up with uh, none of the fuses gone. Because what it was, was like it's like a relay or a, um, like a timer switch somewhere. Because it wasn't actually a fuse that had blown. Uh, cheers Mercedes for making life complicated, more complicated than it was. What a shit in there. Well it looks a bit of a grisly old day, doesn't it? wonder what they got for me for tomorrow. <coughs> I'll get a couple of hours down the road and I'll phone them up and uh, find out. Can't be much so I've got to be back Tuesday night. That's me done. Easy. Easy money. Easy money. Fancy stopping and getting something to eat. I'm bloody starving. Gilbert Dyke and North Cave. I saw a South Cave back there. Was there? Clearly there must be caves around here. Lights are working. I don't want to stop in a garage. We'll go to the adult store. Not today, anyway. This is a sedate way to travel. going on so um, I'm just trundling along until I uh, get out of this 40 mile an hour limit and then I'll uh, see there's a little truck stop down in there no it's a few trucks stop down in there I think I think that's a well I'm not sure actually might be someone's yard
slept well last night. Woken up at 10 to 5 this morning. I alarm slept at 5 anyway. But I got woken up. <coughs> oh my word. There was no really old vehicles around me last night when I parked up. I don't know if you've ever watched any of these videos where they say, right, we're going to do a cold start on a vehicle that's been parked for about 20 years. And they're knocking when they fire it up before it... it a real bad knock. Well, that's what this thing was like. It was like, fucking hell. It was like a couple of hammers being hit off a big steel girder. Unbelievable. eventually it fired up and he had to rev the bollocks out of it to keep it going so if I thought you know if I wouldn't get up at five I'd have, might have got the you know it's like jeez man need to get that looked at so I was awake anyway so uh, just got up had a brew got myself sorted out done me checks yeah lights still failed but I only had a trundle I trundled four minutes around the corner a bit naughty I suppose but you know I'd already phoned it in so it was logged it was getting repaired and that we were waiting for the repair bloke to come out so yeah I probably would have got away with it So yeah, just uh, drive down here until I pick up the M, uh, M18, uh, down to the M1, then it's a long old crawl down, a, down the M1 southbound. <coughs> and then I pick up the uh, <coughs> A43, M40, A34, you know the score. Just double check to make sure that we're not supposed to be going somewhere different. No, no. Because I'm on what they call spot hire. We've got a, a contract with a big shipper, um, and some of our wagons are sign written up with their name on it, and um, I'm not. I've got the company name, and um, I tend to do what they call spot hire which means you're working for um, other shippers lots of different shippers so I could have Ocean Network Express Tritons APLs Apac Lloyd Yang Ming Evergreen you know I could have all sorts of different boxes on the back as well as you know and all the others um, CMG CMA HMM um, Maersk uh, you know all the all the big lines so I tend to do that and this is a I don't even know what line this is actually what shipping line it is um, but you're unlikely when you're doing spot hire you're unlikely to get a reload on it and they pay both directions so it doesn't matter Company's not bothered. any problems with overruns now, now that I'm empty. Just very cautious, I keep checking my tail lights. <coughs> I've got a like a rubbery mount, uh, rubber mounted side light that sticks out right at the very end. You see them on the end of, end of trucks, for those of you that uh, are not in the game. And uh, 
that's how I knew last night that my uh, lights had possibly failed. So as soon as I could, I pulled over once I'd realised, and I knew I only had a couple of miles to go to the yard, but I was stopping, truck stop. And I thought, oh, I just get, you know, there's nothing I can do. Keep going. Get out of the way. So I made that decision. But I would keep looking just in case it goes again. I wouldn't have thought so because it was actually a, a, a corroded wire or a broken wire. So unlikely for that to fail again. So we should be good. feeling he might. And that lorry's going by him, he's realised. No, dropped off again. Five I got seven miles I can get by. while he's only doing 50. Other than the fact that he's in no rush to get to his next job. So I'm going to wonder how busy the road's going to be today. about going into a lockdown so we'll do what we normally do make things a lot worse and then fucking panic and then come back and said oh we should have done it earlier funny that Feels look wet, but absolutely sodden. Quite a bit of surface water on it. So I think I've waffled on enough. I'll put you on. Oh, there's the bridge. We've got to go over the bridge. Was it the River Ooze? Ooze. See a church spire. Oh, 
garlic factory to the right, just out of shot. Big wind farm down to the left there. I don't know what town that is. Is that Ghoul? 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 Entirely sure. be wrong but I reckon it is judging by the sign so a 50 mile an hour limit for some unknown reason but none of the cars seem to be. It's like he's wobbling around on the road a bit though. He's making a sandwich or something. There he goes again. Meaning to say that I'm going to stop in there, glues. What have they got there? There is a McDonald's across the road, and there is a little uh, truck stoppy type place. Never stopped in there. Pick it up. If you don't, I'm gonna have to go past you. Mind you, I've got to come off in a minute, haven't I? No point. Stay where I am. Wagon out yet. Just under a mile to go, then I'll, uh, as soon as I'm on the M18, I'll turn you off. What do you reckon? Thirty-five. A few pheasants in that field. A few bit of cabbages.
exit the highway towards M18 to the south. Give me the bomb. Oh, I thought he would be turning off. No, he's just, he is just going slow. <coughs> Somebody else not in a rush today. Doncaster 15, Bovrum 28. Right, so uh, plot on. Or should I say speed on? Gives the impression that I'm going for it. Speak to you in a bit. Hello. Just about to get onto the M1. No llama drama so far. I know in the past few videos I've teased you a little bit with some exciting news. Well, yeah, it's exciting for me. You know, I might admit it. Well, I will admit it. Um, so, chatting to uh, someone this morning who gave me the... Uh, well, it's not a confirmation. Because the date is still to be decided. But, uh, and I've heard this, and the reason why I've been a bit guarded with it, it's not because, um, well, it's just because I've heard this, I've heard this, the story over and over and over again, and, and been told, yeah, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, and they haven't, you know, um, and basically what it is, is I'm getting a new truck, so I told you I wasn't too much to get excited about, but it is for me, because, you know, it's where I live for five days a week, sometimes six. You know, I spend the majority of my life in here. This is my home. In fact, you could say this is my first home, but when I go home, that's my second home. So I spend far more time in this truck than I do anywhere else. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing. Yeah, this is where I live. So I'm getting a new home. Uh, it's a Mercedes Actros, brand new. So it'll be interesting to see what the what it's like inside. Um, from the pictures that I've seen and the research that I've done, they look a, they look a bit whizzy, a bit more updated than these ones. So uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, got, it's got the uh, cameras for wing mirrors, so I've got the internal internal mirrors or the displays. So yeah, it'd be interesting to say, interesting to, uh, well I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to it. The only downside, there's one downside to it. And there's no inverter, there's no inverters being fitted to these. Um, which is a bit of a shame really. In fact, it's a bit of a ball ache.
so I might see how much it costs when I go into Merck to see if they can um, fit one for me. Depends on their, their labour rate, you know. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So yeah, that's my news, I'm getting a new truck. And it should be here in January, sometime. But um, I've, and the reason I say the reason I've been I've guarded about it is because I've I've heard that story so many times over the last twelve months <laughs> that um, you know it should have been June, uh, then it should have been the summer, then it was September, then it was October, November, December. Now it's January, and I think it was actually before then because I think when I when I took this Merc on. Um, Right. I was told then that it wouldn't be for long because the new Mercs are coming. Well, that was probably about two years ago now. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, so we'll see. Um, like I say, but I think it's. Uh, I think it's getting. I think the time is getting closer and closer and closer. So yeah. You'll see. <coughs> They're all looking fairly quiet. Plenty of trucks on the road. So the last, next couple of days is the last hurrah, I suppose, isn't it, for food shopping? Overcast day today, look. And they seem to be some sort of indecisiveness about the weather for Christmas Day, don't they? Seeing various scenarios being played out, whether it's going to be snowing or whether it's not going to be snowing. I don't think anybody can make their mind up, we'll be 100% certain. services we're not stopping uh, keep on keeping on At least the roads are dry and it's not flicking up tons of shit.
Jack Trost has gone by there. You can see by, I don't know if you can see the mirrors. But, well, there isn't any. He's got a couple of cameras sticking out either side. I'm gonna have a packet of crisps because I'm starting to feel hungry now. I knew I should have stopped. The problem is if I keep going and then stop, it'd be, be an hour or so down the road and I wouldn't want to eat then because it'll be near me dinner time. So I'll be pulling over about between five and six o'clock. So I have something to eat at three o'clock is a bit of a waste of time. I shot myself in the foot a bit. <laughs> so anyway, M1 southbound, junction 30. I don't come off until 15A, which is 85 miles away. So I might come off at the red line and have a 45 in there, which would be 80 miles away. Which is around an hour and 40 odd minutes away. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, I'll speak to you in a bit.